All right, so we want to construct a compact set of real numbers whose limit points form a countable set. So what we're going to do is we're going to let E be the set containing both the number 0 and all numbers of the form 1 over n, where n is a natural number. So all integers greater than or equal to 1. Um, so E is contained in the closed interval from 0 to 1. Um, The only limit point of E is 0. Here we're going to use the definition of a limit point to be um, right. So in order to have a limit point, you need every neighborhood of the point needs to have another element which is not that point which is in that neighborhood. So just like the singleton point like one is not a limit point because even though the point one is in the set, um, if you go to a neighborhood of like an interval of radius one fourth around it, then that won't contain any more elements of the set. So it's an isolated point. Yeah, so so that's the thing. It's um, limit. The set of limit points does not include isolated points. Um, and if we look at 1 over n, where n is in the natural numbers, all of the points in the set itself are isolated points. However, this set does have a limit point, and that limit point is 0. Um, 0 is an E. So, E contains all of its limit points. It is thus closed and bounded and therefore it is compact. And so let's see here. So the question asks, construct a compact set of real numbers whose limit points form a countable set. Now when they say countable, usually when we say countable, we mean a set which has cardinality um, at most that of the integers. So technically, we usually consider finite sets to be countable. So I guess you could technically say that we're done with this exercise because this um, set of real numbers has just one limit point and a set containing one element is finite and therefore countable. However, that's probably not what they're asking for because what they probably want is a set of real numbers whose limit points form a infinite countable set. So they, they probably don't want us to use finite because otherwise this exercise isn't very difficult. Um, this reminds me of something an analysis professor told me, which is sometimes there's ambiguity in a problem statement and so you can like answer the pro give an answer that is technically correct, but not really what the question's asking for. So you always want to interpret uh, the professor said that you should always interpret a question in the most difficult way possible, which is of course frustrating as a student, but realistically it gives you what the question is at really asking for. It, it it's 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 best for you as a mathematician. Um, so yeah, so let's do what they're really asking for, which is a compact set whose limit points form an infinite countable set. So here's what we're going to do. Let's draw out a number line, we're going to go from 0 to 2. This is going to be 1 here. And so E is going to be contained in this interval here. E is contained in the interval from 0 to 1. So what we want to do is we want to go, let's see, so this is going to be three halves. We want to take E and sort of translate it and squish it to fit between the interval from one to three halves. So we'll call this like E, well here, what should we call this? We should call this E0, and we're going to call this E1. And then from three halves to, let's see, you're cutting this interval from three halves to two and a half, that would give us seven eighths. 
we want to put E2 here, where E2 is we just take E0 and squish it and put it in um, the interval from 3 halves to 7 over 8. All right, so let's make this rigorous. So how do we construct En? So let En, well, I guess these are going to be compact sets, so let's use Ks. Um, also, that way K0 will end up being E, so we're not renaming E. So anyway, so let Kn be um, the union from n equal, no, 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 no. So e is going, kn is going to be 2 to the minus n times the set e plus the sum from k equals 0 to n minus 1 of 2 to the minus k. So here, 2 to the minus n times e, that's taking the set e, and it's going to shrink it by some constant. So if n equals 0, e is not being shrunk at all. If n equals 1, then we're multiplying e times 1 half. So instead of, you're basically going to take all, so 1 half e is going to be all points of the form 1 half x, where x is an element of e. So that will basically just be the same thing as taking the set E and scrunching it up so that it fits in the interval from 0 to 1 half. And then the second part is the sum, which will move it over if necessary. Now the convention we're going to use here is that if the if this sum, if the number at the top is smaller than the number in the bottom, then this sum disappears because it's an empty sum. This comes into play when n equals 0, because then we have the sum from k equals 0 to minus 1 which we will interpret as an empty sum. And that's what we want, because when n equals 0, we want to just get e from this um, formula. And if we use this convention, then that's what we get. However, when we plug in n equals 1, we're going to take e and multiply by 1 half. So that's going to uh, squish it down. And then we're going to add 2 to the 0, which is 1. So we're going to add 1 to it. So we're going to shift it over and put it exactly where we see k1 to be in this graph. Similarly, k2, we're going to scrunch it down so that the length is only 1 fourth. And then we, we shift it over first by 1 and then by another half so that it starts at 3 halves. And that's where k2 starts in this graph here, or in this plot here that I've drawn. And then we go onwards and onwards and onwards. Okay. Um, let's see here, each kn is, well I guess we don't, each kn is going to be compact since e is, but that's not really useful for this problem, so I'm not going to write it down. So we're also going to define our final set k to be, let's see here, first we're going to take the union from n equals 0 to infinity of kn. And that's going to give us all of these sets that we've put together. However, if we look at this, we want to get a compact set. And these, um, these Kn's, they get closer and closer to 2 on the number line while still always being to the left of 2. And so 2 is actually going to be a limit point, and we'll prove that in a bit. And so we need to include this point 2 here. Okay, so... The only limit point of Kn is, um, just as we saw with E, the only limit point of E is the left boundary of E, which is 0. So the only limit point of Kn, by the same argument, is going to be the leftmost element of Kn, which is going to be, well, when you plug, when you take the zero element from E, you look at what element that corresponds to in Kn, and that's just going to be the sum from K equals zero to N minus one of two to the minus K. So the only limit point of Kn is this sum um, thus K has countably many limit points in the interval from 0 to 2. 
Because this is the union of all the KNs is going to be the set um, from 0 to 2. Or this is going to be the union of all the KNs is contained in 0 to 2. Um, and any point not in this interval is not contained in any of the KNs. Okay. And the, the, these limit points themselves are all the numbers of this form. Um, so let's see here. How can we, we write these out? So we're going to have one. We're going to have three halves. And they are given by, well, for each n, what we do is we take 2, and then we subtract 2 to the minus n. Right? So, and this is for n equals 1 to infinity. Indeed, um, well, no, this should be n equals 0 to infinity. Because when n equals 0, we get 2 minus 1, which is 1. When n equals 1, we get 2 minus 1 half, which is 3 halves. And we get n equals 3, that's 2 minus 1 eighth, which is 7 eighths. And so we see that this matches up with what we have in our graph. Um, okay, so these are the limit points. Um, K has no, let's scroll down a little bit. K has no limit points in the interval from negative infinity to zero open and um, no points in there and none in the open interval starting at two and going to positive infinity. Because if you choose any point in any of these, um, if you choose, well, first of all, if you choose any point from minus infinity to zero, then this is strictly bounded away from any um, element of E. And so it's strictly bounded away from every element of K. And as for two infinity, um, well, two is an element of, two is the rightmost element of K and so any element in the open interval from 2 to infinity is going to be strictly bounded away from 2 and so it can't be a limit point because you can fit you can fit an open neighborhood there um, what about 2? Two? Um, 2 is a limit point of k because 2 is the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 minus 2 to the minus n. And these points are points which are contained in k um, because the nth 2 minus 2 to the minus n is contained in kn. No, it's contained in kn plus 1 um, because how, of how this is written. Right. So I guess the, the limit points in 0, 2 is technically given by 0 union and then this set. All right, so yeah. Um, so 2 is the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 minus 2 to the n. But 2 is already in k. And we see that 0 and all the 2 minus 2 to the minus 0 union with the collection of all elements of the form 2 minus 2 to the minus n from n equals 0 to infinity. This is contained in k because just like we said, 2 minus 2 to the minus n is contained in k n plus 1. And then 0 is, is contained in k 0. Um, so all the limit points in the half open interval from 0 to 2 are contained in k. Um, and the limit point 2 is in k. And k has no other limit points. Thus k contains its limit points. And so it is closed. K is also contained in the closed interval from 0 to 2. So K 
is bounded. Hence, K is a compact subset of R. It's a compact set with countably many limit points. And that's what we wanted to show, and so we are done. Of course, there are other sets that we can construct um, that are compact and subsets of R and have countably many limit points. In fact, take this set and translate it any amount to the left or to the right, and also stretch it or shrink it as much as you want, and it will still work. There might also be like easier examples to prove things with than this one, but in any case, this is certainly a set that works. Um, but yeah, so this finishes the proof.